Do not fret, my child. We are all weak. <laughs> you certainly are. Shut up, you carnivore. Why don't you go gnaw on a bone like a gorilla lad, though? Our ancestors didn't eat chicken wings. They lived at one with nature and their ecosystem, subsisting on a diet of nuts, berries, and leafy vegetables. Yes, and they threw stones at their own shadow and died of old age and fear at 24. Laszlo, the soul is eternal. But let me answer the question. When I'm in trouble or tempted by those all-you-can-eat breakfast buffets with huge pans of juicy bacon... Can we get some bacon in here? (sighs) Laszlo, I go back to basics. I start the day with a fruity beverage, some meditation, and six hours of yoga. The next, I go open up my shop, now and then, and drink two pints of hand-pressed potato juice. And who wants a steak after that? Okay, next caller, you are on Chatterbox with Reed Tucker. Yo, Reed... Kung Fu movies are dope. How can I learn to beat up ten guys at once? Okay, first things first, my man. You need to stop the negative thinking. And the best attack I've found is to just run away. That way you instill fear in your opponent. They never know when you might descend from the rafters like a bat. I don't want to hear about no tofu running away. I want to learn about being a ninja and kicking people's asses. Actually, I do cover this early on in the book in Chapter 45. It's called Stir Fry Your Prejudice. You see, I once thought like you before my master took me under his wing and taught me the joys of soy and origami. Concentration begins in the mind and spreads to all the extremities of the body. You must use the language of the body, not the tongue. And the language of the body begins with raw, uncooked, organic vegetables. Just look at me. I could tear a phone book in half with my bare toes. In fact, Laszlo, I could easily chop this desk in two half desks. This desk is made of two-inch thick composite wood pulp and has a mahogany veneer finish. It has three drawers, and knowing this station, it costs $100. In his own words, Reed Tucker is about to smash it into two half desks. Take it away, Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, I already visualized the desk in two half desks, and now I shall make it so... Dragon stance. Hey, yeah! Oh! Oh, oh, Lazo! Lazo! I think I hurt my hand. My, my pinky's all bent the wrong way. Listen, Karate Kid, the desk is still in one piece. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay, Lazo, mockery will get you nowhere. I think I'm gonna hit you now. Oh, I breathe easily. Don't throw any tofu or bean curds at me. Okay, very funny, Lazo. It's easy to make fun of me, but it's all the fault of the feng shui in here. It's downright disgraceful. Yes, it makes you talk like this. Okay, the listener lines are open. This is Chatterbox. You're on the air. Hey, Lazo. That last guy was a lunatic. Where'd you dig him up from? The state loony bin? And that wacko you had going on about killer bees? What a moron. I mean, just read a newspaper. Killer bees, uh, the evils of artificial sweeteners and soda pop, Roswell, it's all part of the government's propaganda plan. I might as well wear a satellite dish so they can beam their propaganda right into my brain. Come on, do you honestly believe the NSA's echelon system isn't already reading your emails and recording your phone conversations? It's all designed to frighten us so we don't complain about our rights being taken away in the name of fighting whatever boogeyman they come up with today. Uh, Well, I mean, you realize that the government listens to this station, and and if they weren't paying particular attention to you before, they're probably going to be following you now. Oh, yeah. Look, they already got me once, but never again. (laughs) Do you have anything else to say? Yeah. Free Kevin! All right, we're talking about short guys, killer bees, the Magna Carta, chip... Uh, well, the red light on the wall is flashing, which means that the owner of the station has an important announcement to make. Let's go live to his office. Hello, my name is Donald Love. You're listening to a Love Media Station. Enjoy. Wow, man, that was deep. You know, I really like working here. This station, it feels like my second family. (laughs) Except that we have a snack machine. And I tell you, working here beats the hell out of digging sewage ditches outside Kuala Lumpur. All right, let's go to the phones. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Last little man, I, I was listening to that English wimp you were talking to earlier. I mean, do these guys realize how wussy they sound? I mean, they they have the nerve to call crackers biscuits. And they say aluminium instead of aluminum. I mean, what's up with that? They all think they sound so smart with the little funny accents. I mean, I got something for them. Speak English, you limey morons. Well, you know, I think they were speaking English before we were. Uh, the people over here were speaking Shoshone and Cherokee. Man, Cherokee Schmerkee, man. And, and another thing, what's up with them calling soccer football? Man, you, you ever watch soccer? Man, that's a boring game, man. Yeah, I'll tell you what soccer is. Soccer's for little girls, man. Football, now that's an American sport. It, it teaches you good, wholesome American values, man, like like stealing other people's land by force and, and wearing tight pants while you do it. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about being a man, Laszlo. Something you wouldn't know anything about from the sound of things. I'll tell you, I bet you played wimpy stuff like, like touch football and, and, and basketball. Look, I'm running around the court bouncing the ball and I'm seven foot three. I'm telling you, man, I only play men sports like football and hopscotch. Hopscotch? That's a girl's game. Man, that ain't a girl's game, man. Not rugby hopscotch. Man, get me in a scrum and I'm dangerous. I'll take anybody down. I'm the hopscotch master. I got fly skills and hopscotch. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of see your point, but, you know, you'd be a little cranky, too, if your empire had fallen apart over the last hundred years. And speaking of commerce, it's time for some commerce here. Let's go to commercials. We'll be back after this. Has your marriage gone stale? Has the spark gone out of your love life? Looking to add a little adventure to the monotony of monogamy? Hello, I am Fernando Martinez, founder of Fernando's New Beginnings, a revolutionary new way of saving your marriage. We understand how two kids and a mortgage can take the passion out of your life. With our three-step program, you'll rediscover romance guaranteed. Hi, my name's Phil. I've got three kids, two cars, and a mortgage. My love life was going stale, even before my wife's car accident. Then I called New Beginnings. Thanks to Fernando, I'm still married. But on Wednesday afternoons, I meet Barbara at the motel by the turnpike. See? The passion she's back. Phil's marriage is saved, and his kids will have a daddy to look up to. Call New Beginnings today. Cinco, 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 nueve dos, nueve dos. It will be a miracle. I guarantee it. Fernando's New Beginnings. We turn an ending into a new beginning. Mom, there's a package for you. But I didn't order anything. What's this? How sweet. <coughs> Gee Willikers, it's a puppy. Everybody loves a puppy. And now you can ship one anywhere just by logging on to PetsOvernight.com. PetsOvernight.com. Delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. <coughs> And who says that e-commerce isn't a brilliant idea? All right, speaking of brilliant, you're listening to Chatterbox with me, Laszlo. Let's go over here to the phones and see what's plaguing Liberty City. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Wow, I got through. Uh, Laszlo, I think your last few callers are a perfect example of manners in this city. People are rude, and they don't seem to care about anything but themselves. Perfect example. The other day, I stopped at the store to pick up an exercise bar because I hadn't had breakfast or lunch. So I go up to pay, and the lady's like, a dollar twenty-five, please. So I get out my checkbook, and the guy behind me is like, oh, come on, lady, you don't have two dollars? And I said, as a matter of fact, I don't. I spent my last two dollars last night buying gas at these ridiculous gas prices. And besides, who are you anyway? Can't you see that I'm wearing my I Walked for the Cure t-shirt? People are so... So inconsiderate. Well, you'll get no argument from me. I mean, I get every inconsiderate moron in Liberty City calling into this show. I mean, people think that I have no feelings whatsoever. Exactly. A another perfect example. The other day, I'm over at the hospital to have lunch with my girlfriend, Sharice, and this maniac comes right up on my bumper, flashing his lights, and I'm like, hey, guy, the light is red. You can't just come up behind me honking and flashing your lights. Then he gets over this megaphone and says to the woman in the teal my Botsu monstrosity, please move to the side. Can you believe it? I mean, who has a megaphone rigged into their car? People are so obnoxious these days and rude. I mean, I tell my nanny to teach my kids some manners. You know, I think that's a lesson to us all. All right, hello, next caller. You're on Chatterbox. Hello, Laszlo. Ugh. Did that woman say she was a nanny? Because Freddy needs a nanny because he's been a very naughty boy. No, no nannies. Let's go to our next caller. All right. Colonel James T., United States Marine Corps, 2nd Battalion. Laszlo, that caller made a really valid point. These kids today have no respect for authority. And there is one thing that would whip them into shape. <laughs> Let me guess. The, the military. That's right. The military teaches you respect, obedience, and it gives you a good pension. These kids that thought they were going to be millionaires, look where the super information highway has gotten them. Nowhere. It's a dead end. Uncle Sam takes care of his boys and some girls. If more people would join the military, this would be a better country. And I tell you another thing about respect. These kids don't respect veterans. We fought for your freedom. When I came back from the Australian-American War, I didn't get a hero's welcome. 
I didn't get a pat on the back from my friends and neighbors saying, thanks for fighting for our freedom, James. After years of fighting in the trenches, I come back here and everyone's watching TV. Now, can you tell me what this Australian-American war was? I mean, I really never heard of it. God, not another one. Have you read a history book lately, son? The Australian-American War was the biggest war since the big one. I tell you, I didn't do two tours and take boomerang shrapnel in my head so I could come back here and have a bunch of hippies deny history. Those Aussies are ruthless. They even wired kangaroos with explosives. Come hopping into camp. Knock out ten guys. Well, thanks for the history lesson. All right, let's go over here. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Yeah? Is that Laszlo? Yes, it is. Who's this? My name ain't important. It's real unimportant, okay? Uh, no, not really. I mean, this is a radio show. People usually tell us their name. My name is real unimportant. And you want to keep being a wise guy, you'll find out just how unimportant. Like, unimportant, I just got shot in the head, unimportant. Do I make myself clear? Uh, yes. Uh, Why are you calling in today? Because I need some advice. And I ain't doing any of that shrink shit. Uh, if you swear again, we're gonna have to cut you off. This is a family show. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm just a little unhappy, a bit agitated, real angry. It's my ma. She don't think I'm a real man. Can you imagine that? I mean, I do a man's job and all, but she treats me like a little boy. All I get is, your pa this and your pa that and you ain't a real man, Tony, and it's driving me freaking nuts. Well, Tony... Tony? How'd you know my name was Tony? You're tracing this call? Because if you are, you're going to get real intimately acquainted with what your brains look like. My name ain't Tony, okay? Uh, okay. But my mom, she keeps going, Tony, Tony, be a real man. Stand up for yourself. Don't take no shit. But all I do is to be a good son. And I want her to show that she cares for me. Show that she loves me. And, you know, say I was a good kid. But... It seems like nothing's ever good enough for her. You know what I mean? What do I do? Well, Toad, I mean, sir, you know, in life we have a lot of obligations, and we just kind of have to face up to them. And right now, I'm obligated to play some commercial announcements. We'll be back right after this. We've got a new friend for everyone. He's got fur and a tail. He gets in lots of trouble, but he's a bouncy little fellow. Because he's got springs for legs. Pogo the Monkey, the best new video game for the whole family. I love you, Pogo. You bounce. Help Pogo escape from the evil research laboratory where the mean old scientist genetically altered him. Uh Uh-oh, the pharmaceutical scientist is going to get you, Pogo. Here you go, Pogo. Have a gold coin. Good thing Pogo has a banana cannon. Those nasty scientists deserve to die. Now get the shampoo manufacturers before they squirt it in your eye. Here you go, Pogo. Have a diamond. You'll guide Pogo through tons of fun adventures, including saving Timmy, who fell down the well. Here you go, Pogo. Have a big watch. Rescue a cat out of that tree with your banana cannon, Pogo. Here you go, Pogo. Have a fast car. And help Pogo to his final mission, to storm the White House with his friends and become President of the United States. Pogo the Monkey is the game kids are sure to stare at for hours. Everyone loves Pogo. Idiot Gamer called Pogo the best spring and simian game since bouncing bananas. Buy the game Pogo the Monkey today. Right, Pogo? And coming soon, Pogo the Monkey card game, Pogo the Monkey plastic dolls, Pogo the Monkey quilt covers, and Pogo the Monkey car covers. For the dad who has everything, why not a Pogo the Monkey tie-in sports jacket? For the lady in your life, why not Pogo the Monkey chocolates and hygiene products so she smells like a real monkey? And for kids, a life-size, living, breathing, springing monkey. All available at PogoTheMonkey.com. 